Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming my Pocopafon wrap up. I am still struggling to say that word. I don't know why. It's just a struggle. What's happening? <clears throat> Sorry. My last video on my channel was my Pocopafon vlog where I read all the books so you could see me suffer for the over the course for 48 hours ish. It was a 48 hour readathon running from the 20th to the 21st of March. It was my first 48 hour readathon and the reason I was especially excited for this was because that we didn't know all the reading challenges at once. They dropped every 12 hours and then there were you can plan your TBR at enough time. You had to like keep up with the drops. The whole readathon was also live with reading sprints on lots of different channels and it was fun. I didn't really follow the reading sprints because I just like when I read I don't want to take breaks like when the people running the sprints takes breaks which is like of course fine that I take breaks but I just want to go all out I like I don't like to stop but like I did have up the sprints when I was home and stuff so that was nice and it was just like really fun and co co cool experience I can't even speak of all it dropped two challenges every 12 hours and also like it was two before like the reader fun initially started so it was eight altogether I wanted to read eight books and of course complete all the challenges and I did and we're gonna talk about those books here. I know I literally read all these books like the last two days but also feel like I read so much that my brain is scrambled so we'll see how coherent my thoughts are and uh, yeah I also wish that I did speak so much about each book in my wrap-ups because it, it they all turn so long. We have eight books here and yeah I'm just thinking I will be here forever when I shouldn't. <laughs> but yeah I hope you enjoy my thoughts on these and uh, check out my vlog if you want to see me suffer reading them. I also had like a very mixed amount of books like some were like one star and some some it was like one one star and some were like five stars it was just like a very mix of books which was fun. Okay the first book we have is In an Absent Dream by Sinan McGuire. This one I read for the challenge to read a fantasy book and this one is the fifth I'm lying. This one is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series and it is a standalone in the series but it's still set in the same world. If you don't know Wayward Children it's like a portal fantasy where we usually follow like in the first book at least people can back from portal worlds but this one we follow one character called Lindy if that was her name Lundy and she and there's into a fantasy world where it's like a lot about like fair value and stuff and it was really cool she meets like her first real friend and then she has to choose between living in that world or in our world and it does hint towards like all the time that it's not going to be a happy ending and i don't want to talk about it i'm sad but overall i hope that this character does show up maybe in the later books because the author has like mixed up the characters in the different books and i'm just hoping i have hope in my heart <laughs> she basically comes into a world with a goblin market and it's just very interesting learning about this world these characters are very interesting and just her interactions with other characters i said the character so many times i just loved the world okay and i love learning about new magical worlds i just love the idea of it and i really really enjoyed the characters did I already say that? I don't even know. It was just very good and solid. It was short. That was why I picked it, obviously, for our readathon. But I just love this series so much. It's like one of my faves and it was just so solid. I just think it was so strong for being so short and very beautiful. It just feels like a fairy tale. I don't want to go on a long thing, but basically I loved it and I gave it five out of five stars. So I started off really well. Then for the challenge to read a book with a dark cover, I read Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. So obviously it's dark cover. It is black and has a skull on it. So what more dark can you have? This one I got from my friend Erica who wanted me to read it. And um, it's basically about Emilia. She's a witch and then like all her life she's been told to like not summon like one of the princes of hell not talk about them and stuff like her grandma's always believed in them and then her sister gets murdered and then she wants to find out who did the murdering and like investigate it and because of this she summons accidentally wrath one of the princes of hell and then they go out on an investigation and stuff this is my first carry maniscalco book i haven't read stalking jack the ripper i never really had an interest to but i have been like inclined to because everyone says it's amazing but this is her new series overall I didn't really like it. I didn't really have a good time with it. I didn't like the writing at all. It was very like weird and it just did a lot of like telling us all the times and all the things instead of like showing us things. It's very annoying. I can't even communicate but okay. How I communicate is how this book was written. <laughs> Which is not really well so there we have it. And I just didn't like how the story went. It was just a very weird paced story I guess. Like it starts off with this murder which is fine and then she's gonna investigate and it's just a lot of back and forth meeting people and stuff and then like when we actually found out what happened I was like 
oh my god, I actually guessed it from the beginning, which was very random. I was just like, I bet it's like this, and then it actually was like that. But it's not like the book was bad in my opinion because it was predictable. It was just flat like we had this cool princess of hell and had these cool powers but there was just so many explanations and i feel like a lot of it was like very convenient and then like they cut off exactly when you're gonna know a certain thing and then like we find out later in the book and it was just like all very convenient and not convincing for me to like be for example this prince of hell who's gonna be dangerous and powerful and it just he wasn't and the main character was literally like a dead fish she didn't have any personality or traits whatsoever she was just like oh i had motivation to find out his murder and then it was weird i can't even describe my feelings towards his book i just didn't like it that much i didn't enjoy myself like the mystery could have been like cool and maybe like appealing but it wasn't it was just like a flat fish potato because it sounds so atmospheric it's like whatever you do you must never speak to the wicked if you see them hide once you caught the demon prince's attention he will stop at nothing to claim you they are midnight creatures born of darkness and moonlight and they seek only to destroy it sounds so mysterious and like very atmospheric and devilish i don't know how to describe it but ultimately it just felt like a very not solid ya for me it like fell in the ya part of the ya that i don't like it was just very like like, it had a potential, but it just didn't follow through. I did not like the prosecution of this story at all. Prosecution? That's not a word. Execution. But yeah, I ended up giving this two out of five stars. I feel like I couldn't convey exactly what this made me feel, but it just, in general, made me feel nothing, so that's probably why. I then read There's Something About Sweetie by Sundayo Manon. This one is like the second book, I guess, in the Wendy Bilbert Reached trilogy, but they're all full of different characters and like different love romances thingies. I don't even know how to describe it. It's a contemporary romance, and I read this for the challenge to have a PC rep because the main character is Indian and she's also fat and she always feel like she's been enough she runs track feel also something great about herself but her mother doesn't and then the mother of the dude Ash ish which I know it's not how you say it. Also the brother to Rishi, by the way, from Wendy from Rishi. He like has failed in love and he wants his parents to help him and they think that Sweetie will be good match for him. But her mother is like, um, you can't date him because you're not good enough because you're fat. Because her mother is awful. And then they decided to date in secret because Sweetie wanted to prove to her mom later that she's good enough. And it's just the sweetest thing, them dating and like falling for each other and just all the themes we you know fat phobia and stuff but also Ash is just trying to get over his ex that cheated on him I loved all the characters they all just felt so real and alive on the page I loved like the story how it went like you think it was gonna be like a lot of drama with like a certain thing but it wasn't that much and I loved I loved that like it all was fine and beautiful and just sweetie dropping scared just because of other people and just being confident in herself and yeah she was overconfident and loved herself but like even more so and i just loved it so much it was so good like i i just thought about this story like what, what was it that i didn't like and it was just like nothing so this was five out of five stars too so yeah i went from five to two to five so that was a great ride and it was just so good it's hard to explain it but i just loved it so much and i recommend it a lot not just for the representation of like also just you know the both of the main characters are indian as well a cute romance but yeah, representation is also important. That's not what I'm saying. I'm gonna move on because I'm babbling today. I then read for the challenge to read a contemporary book, Diary of Noxious the Thief by Anonymous. This one I had for ages. I bought it because like I saw like a clip from like Instagram years ago and it's like sound like a asshole story but like an interesting one i guess i knew like the main character is like asshole misogynist but it was too much i don't know how to describe it but like it doesn't even have a plot it's just like the main character talk about the story of hurting girls not like physically but mentally like being together with them and then breaking up with them and then he's an alcoholic and the lady just blames that he did it all because he's an alcoholic of course being an alcoholic you do can do hurtful things and like you or maybe not in 100% control of your actions, but he blamed it like all on that and stuff like owning up to it himself and like be sorry for it. And then he meets this other woman who kind of like does the same thing to him, I guess. It was weird. For me, it just came across as like a privileged, <laughs> savvy story. I don't know how to describe it. It was just not good. Of course, what the other person did to him was not okay, but just because that happened doesn't mean that what he did was okay either. So yeah, it just, I don't know. It was trying to be like edgy and be like, oh, this asshole. And I don't I don't mind reading asshole stories, I don't mind following like, I was gonna say a villain, but not, I wouldn't call him a villain, but like in a fantasy novel, I don't mind following the bad guy. But like when the automations and when you're actually like a literal ultra asshole, it's really hard to feel anything for the main character. And just how we thought about people was so nasty, it was like, 
with a person and then he was like oh yeah we probably broken up and she's a bit drunk so there's always a hope for sex and maybe i got laid and just how he thought about people was just nasty and that just didn't excuse anything so yeah i give it one of five stars and i wish i didn't read it and i wish i didn't own it but uh, here we are today and i don't want to talk about it anymore so let's move on the next challenge was to read like it was a chance card so we have to read like take like a pile of books on your tbr and like take some that you didn't want to read that much and then some you wanted to read a lot and then like pull like for example random number some number to see which one you would get. I got a book I really want to read, and if you want to see me actually do it, I have it in my vlog. But yeah, I got Ironheart by Nina Varela. This one was like on the top of my TBR for 2021. This is a sequel to Christ War. It's like a sci-fi fantasy where the world is controlled by Otomains, so like people who are people, basically people from Westworld. <laughs> people who are like robots, and they are controlled like over the humans. In the first book, Isla wants to kill the choir because she's daughter from the king, and king is like responsible for all the horrible things happening to humans and then like she becomes her handmaiden and they fall in love and it's very cute and this one just other repercussions from the first book obviously i'm not going to spoil it but basically i just really 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 enjoyed this it was so much fun just seeing this story wrap up and you know the two best girls just it's adorable you know i liked it it was fun. War between the Ottomans and the humans were interesting. It's interesting characters. It's fun plot. It's it's lots of great times. I don't know what to tell you. When you apparently like a book, it's harder to talk about when you didn't like it. I did enjoy the first book a lot. I just loved romance. There's also like always like a story when the main character tells a story to the other character. It was one in the first one and one in this one. It's like almost my favorite part because I just love stories within stories because it makes the world feel so rich and I love that. And overall just a great fun sci-fi fantasy with enough of romance. It makes it great, okay? Solid true and true, four out of five stars. Apparently this review was very bad, but we're gonna move on. At this point, I was like behind because I had to go to work on Saturday. I needed to read very, very short things. So the next challenge was to read the first book in a series. And I did by reading Legion by Brandon Sanderson. This one is the first one in a novella trilogy. And it follows Leeds. Is his name just Leeds? Apparently. He had a first name. Stefan, I think. <laughs> I don't even remember. He is schizophrenic, but like all these different personalities has a different skill set and I help him like solve cases and then he's hired to like find this certain object and yeah it's a short story but it's just very good you ask yourself like of course other people can see what the main character is seeing but like you ask yourself if like is it his skills or is it like actually their skills it's very very interesting but also like very interesting with like the whole case he's solving and also can we talk about the fact that in this he's looking for this woman that helped him like 10 years ago and her name is sandra and there's never any characters in, <laughs> in books that's named sandra and he was all like oh my god sandra and i was just like oh my god it's me obviously not because this person was apparently blonde but i thought that that was like very hilarious for me at least. No one else, just me. I, I don't know, Brandon Sanders is always original and his writing is so good and it's just like you want to know so badly what happened. In this super short story, but it was just so solid. I think I gave it four to five stars. I don't know if I gave it four or five and I'm very excited to read like the two other novellas now. Like I want to read them like ASAP, but I'll probably wait until like I need something short, I guess, because that's what I, that's how I will. But yeah, I don't know what more to tell you. It was good. It was solid. Read it. Again, I needed something that went by really fast. The next challenge was to read other and it was to like read a genre you don't usually read that much. It doesn't need to be your least favorite, but like nothing you read that often. And I chose to read The Sun and the Flowers by Ruby Core because this is a poetry book and never read poetry. So it faded well for the challenge and I knew it was going to go by fast. And I know there's like a lot of things to say about Ruby Core's poetry. I, I like it, okay? I think the themes she has in some of them, feminism, and like place of women in the world, sexual harassment, and like the expectations of women are very relatable. Also like about self-image and the body. I felt myself a lot in certain poems. Maybe not so much about the ones about love, but uh, hopefully maybe I will get her one day, lol. But overall, I don't tab books, but if I did, I would tab this because there was some that I really, really liked. Some I didn't care that much for, which is like, I think normal in any poetry collection, but overall, like, I like them, okay? I think that some really speaks to me. That is one of the most important things when you're reading, when it makes you feel something. And I could relate to a many of these. That's nice. I don't want more to tell you. I give it four or five stars, okay? So yeah it just had really nice themes that's all and for the last book hopefully this went faster than i thought it would it was to read a book set in the present and for that i just chose a contemporary 
didn't need to be, but I did. And I chose to read The Serpent King by Jeff Santer. I have this for years because I got it in an oak crate, like the first time I had an oak crate description. I think it came out in 2016, so I probably had it since then. So like five years, that's a long time. Time just passes and you have a book and you thought you read it, but apparently you didn't. When I got this, I thought it was kind of ugly and I was like, well, I like this. But then I read reviews since then, the years that has passed, and everyone has given this five stars. And I was just like, okay, maybe I will really like it. There's something about Sweetie I didn't expect to love as I did, but I did. And I was just hopeful that this would give me a five star feeling. It follows three main characters. It's set in like a really, really small town in, in Tennessee. It follows Dale, who was like the son of like the preacher, but he went to jail because he had like child pornography on his computer. He like these with like people talking about it all the time and he also like feel like he's stuck in this small town because they have a lot of depth and her mother just wants him to work after high school. They're in the last year of high school and he just feels like he's stuck there. Then we have Travis who just like loves fantasy novels and just like go around in like basically like a fantasy outfit and it's just living his best life but his father is like not supportive and very abusive like physically abusive has a hard time to struggle at home and stuff but then he meets this girl online who is like starting to fall in love with her and then we have Lydia who runs a fashion blog and like Instagram and Twitter of course to that blog and she's very popular and she is like want to study journalism and go to like a big college and she has like all her plans in ready pretty exceptional i would say since she is doing so well with her blog also forgot to say that dill is a musician and like but he has like not been able to play and play music for a while i forgot that that trait in his personality lol and it's just them friends being ready to say goodbye to Lydia and deal really strongly with this because he's in love with her. First of all, I didn't really like the writing at first. It was very really just like everywhere. And I just had a struggle, I guess, understanding what was what he was saying because yeah, I had to reread sentences a lot in the beginning before I got used to it. So I didn't really like the writing style, which is fine. Like that's a personal reference, but it kept using slurs, like uh, homophobic slurs. And I guess they did it because they're in the South, they want to show that they're homophobic and problematic. But it was just like an extensive use of it in the beginning and I thought it was a bit much. Like they used the F word and a D word and they used queer as like a insult and I didn't like that. It was just like such an extensive use in the beginning. I was just like, Jesus, can we calm down? Like it stopped after a while and the main characters did not agree with this use. But they didn't call it out either. They just like thought in the head like, oh, people are here are homophobic. And of course, like it can be really scary to call out like your bullies and stuff. I understand that. But like, I just didn't get why out of hat to use these words. You could show that someone is homophobic or problematic or like a mean bully without using these words. I know like maybe it's normalized there to use them as insult, blah, blah, blah. But that's kind of part of the problem. And I just didn't like it. Like every time I used words, I was just like cringing when reading it. And it really ruined my experience in the beginning of the book because I was just like, why did you have to use these words? And I know the words are just words, blah, blah, blah. And some people don't care when you use them, but I do. And it did affect my experience reading this book. So I just want to say that. Although that, of course, I fell for the characters. They you go through really hard hardships. I felt really bad with Dill because everyone was just assholes. It's not his fault that his father was a fucking pedophile. And yeah, his mother was just so annoying. And I felt bad for Travis. He was like my favorite character. I liked Lydia and Travis a lot. Dillard felt okay about, I guess. I felt bad for them, okay, of course. Like, I have other beautiful people, that's my point. But it was just a lot of, like, God and Christian stuff, and, like, a lot of, like, his father was a preacher, so I kept preaching every time he met him, and I was just like, please stop. And I'm not saying, like, I hate religion, Jesus, that's that's not the point. It was just a lot. <laughs> and I was just like, please. Part of the light I did really like, like the characters and their friendship, their plans and like the personalities were really potent and like good. I, I don't know. And then this thing happened that like it's a spoiler, but it was so random. And I guess that's also kind of the point of the book that life is random. You shouldn't wait because you never know what's gonna happen. But it was just so out of the blue. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, it changed the whole tone of the book. Like it was already sad, but like this was just like a tragedy. And 
I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not saying like the book turned bad, but I'm saying that it was a very big tone changer. It didn't feel deserved for the book. I don't know how to describe it. I don't really get the five stars reviews. <laughs> for me, it was just like, some parts were really good. Like the friendships and the characters shown really well. And like, I liked those parts and interactions and like the moments I had, especially later in the book. I found like some moments so sweet. Some of the things they did for each other were so sweet. I, I want to say a certain thing that like was so sweet with Travis. I loved it so much, but it's kind of spoiler because I want you to experience, if you ever read this, like the happiness he felt. And I don't, then I don't want to say it beforehand because it was a surprise, but it made me so happy on his behalf because he deserved that. Yeah, those moments are like one of my favorites and I love them. Like if the book had been made out of those, then great. But there were some parts that were just like very meh and there was just parts that were just like middle tree. So I ended up giving like three out of five stars. Like I didn't hate it, I didn't love it. I just, I liked it okay. I read it now. I just don't get like the full five stars review, best books ever thing. But yeah, I had some good moments, but also some just average ones. But yeah, I felt really bad for Dale too. And uh, I was just thinking about it like the end and I'm happy for him, I guess. Now I read it and I have like the next book from Jeff and I want to read his other ones because they seem to have good things in them. But yeah, this was sad. So warning for that. This is the piles of books that I read for Bookoplathon. I don't know how to say that word, why not? And I hope you enjoyed this video for my wrap up because I had a good time for my first 48 hour readathon. I don't know what more to say, but yeah. This video was also on plan because I didn't plan to do a separate wrap up for this, but then I realized like, why not? Yay, leave a sunflower emoji down below if you like this. And you will see me soon in a new video. <laughs> Goodbye.